All right, ladies, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of jersey design and what goes into making a good jersey. All right, let's get into it. In the future, I will show you how I create my jersey designs that look like this and this. But right now, I'm going to talk about what goes into the thinking and the thought process of what a good jersey design is. And I presume a lot of companies do the exact same process, but sometimes Canterbury make you question such things and wonder why they ever get the contracts to the big jobs. Okay, in the basic realm of things, a jersey for a country or a club is going to be a certain colour. They're always going to have this colour. It's going to be a historical colour. It's going to be important to them. Very rarely do you have a situation situation like what happened to Cardiff in uh, the Premier League. Well, it's not, they're not in the Premier League anymore, they were in the Premier League, but they changed from the colour. I think their main colour used to be red, but then it changed to blue, all because of the owners wanted the club rebrand. Now, I'm not sure what other clubs have gone through such a situation, but it's a very rare thing and generally the fans don't like it. I presume Red Bull Leipzig or anything that Red Bull has ever owned has gone through such changes. But the colour is very important to a club. Decide on a colour palette and everything related to them is that colour. So when you see the likes of this kind of purple, you will think of Fiorentina. If you see blue, generally you think of Chelsea. They're the most famous ones. But if you're thinking rugby, you know you got blue in Leinster, red and Munster. And generally opposing teams love to wear blue or red because it's just your typical clash your typical derby game, your typical opposing colours. That must have been how they set up back in the day. And it kind of continues to this day that the blue versus the red has always been kind of way. You even see it in different kind of games where blue teams face red teams. It's just the way it is. So it has a nice historical aspect. And speaking of historical aspects, jersey designers have to take into account when a team has had success when going into their new jerseys. Arsenal have done it recently where they've gone back to retro jerseys. They've done their gold number that the Thierry Henry used to wear when they were probably the most successful. I believe they've kind of gone for a more retro style again. I can't really, I don't have the biggest knowledge of soccer, but in rugby, we are very bad at doing retro designs and harking back to success by the all blacks who literally wear all black all the time as exciting as that is. Rugby kit designs appear to have been trying to keep being modern, keep being new, and they don't seem to put in the same amount of thought or effort that soccer jersey designs do. And that is what I see as an issue. As a person who loves rugby, the majority of the time I hate the jerseys. They're so annoying. Soccer jerseys can always look so much nicer. The thing is, when you get these kind of jerseys and you want the new ones, Argentina did it in the recent World Cup where they had the collar again and they have the very famous uh, sky blue and white hoops. And that was a very popular jersey amongst anyone and nearly impossible to get. So that showed a good act of history. Japan's rugby jersey, they went through the country's history. So it resembled a samurai's armor, I believe was the idea behind it. And a couple of little intricate designs inside the jersey. Again, another impossible jersey to get if you wanted one. And if you do want one, they cost about a hundred quid, which is an absolute joke for the jersey. Then you have the Irish jersey or the English jersey. And yet yeah, they're going historical with the ways of color, but and then the Irish jersey had this faint ohm design in the shoulders, which ohm, if you don't know, it is like an ancient writing used by the Celts in Ireland and wherever else the Celts were. And it's like etching on stone and stuff. So they had that in the jersey and it said something in ohm, which is all well and good, but you can't see it. So when it's on the TV, all you see is this green jersey, which I know is, Excuse me. I know green represents Ireland very well and there's very few teams that are as iconic in green as Ireland, if I do dare say so. Like you don't think of South Africa as immediately being green, you think of them as immediately being big giant men. For Ireland, the main thing you think of is green. So you want to see a bit of, maybe if you can't get a jersey, a jersey's history correct, like uh, maybe if I use Ireland as a case where we had that awful Canterbury design for the World Cup, which showed nothing by a very faint ohm writing, as I just said. What about the 09 Grand Slam jersey? from Canterbury, which is one of our most famous victories that still is in my memory to this day. Nearly every rugby supporter in Ireland who lived to watch that, who were alive at that time, will remember where they were at the 09 Grand Slam. They will remember where they were for the Ronald Gara drop goal. Like it was just over the 10 year mark. You could have done a 10 year anniversary jersey of it. I know it is very soon, but you could have done something that resembled the cut just to bring back you know, the good times from that jersey, because I don't remember that jersey from the World Cup that they wore in where we were crap. I just remember it where we won the 09 Grand Slam and the famous Royal Nugent uh, commentary on it and all that stuff, all the good feelings. It brings back good memories. Why couldn't we done something like that? Or why couldn't we done something more obvious like to watch Japan did? Uh, it's just, and then 
Argentina brought it back to like a modernized version of old rugby jerseys where they were famous for their collars and the cotton style, which is that's completely gone out of the game. Now. So that's why it's important to design with history in mind for jersey. I know it seems like such a silly thing, but they're brought out every single year, minimum three jerseys per club and then a training kit on top of that. Because you have the European kits and all that sort of stuff. And with soccer, there's God knows how many different kinds of kits. And then with just every sport, there is so many kits that are brought out every year for these. They have to put this kind of thought into it because you're trying to involve the fans of that area. You're trying to maybe even just fans from abroad. Like I'm obviously not from Florence, but here I am wearing a Fiorentina jersey because I love the color and I love the detail in it and the history behind it. And I believe this one was a callback to the footballer Davida story. They're bringing in the history aspect and it needs to be done more often because again, the reason why this video is coming is because Ireland have brought out another jersey from Canterbury with the same cut, which I didn't really like. And it has a silly like paintbrush used thing design. Now, I like the design kind of like where it's going but I don't understand what it means for Ireland it is literally looking like an old rag used by a painter to dry his paintbrush that's that's what it looks like to me now it looks cool as a training jersey or maybe an alternate jersey but where is the history in that jersey there there is none and then England brought out well another just plain white jersey like it, these things are very good I suppose and they're trying to keep with the trends of being modern and keeping up with all that but they're not putting the ideas into the other side of jersey design which I think is so important and which is what I try to do in my jersey designs despite being merely a hobbyist in this where I just post videos up on YouTube to get like 30 views or I post uh, a couple of photos a week on Instagram go follow me there subscribe to me here please to hear me more rants or uh, quick designs or tutorials it's all here on this page to do with sports graphic design and that's why it involves jerseys because it's sports design and I understand is it? Get! I understand that they have to follow trends and try to keep modern and they obviously, they can't stick to the old cotton style or they can't do certain things and they always have to try and move forward and try to guess what people are gonna like, which is okay, but I know it's not as easy as what I make it out to be. It's not like what I do where it's a couple of hours of me thinking about a design and mocking one up. It is not that simple. There is, there's barriers to the process, but they have to take these sort of things into account, I think, for the fans' sake and for the club's sake or maybe the country's sake. And then the final thing, which Canterbury completely messed up, which was another thing to do this, is the presentation of the jerseys. They obviously want to get people excited about it and feeling that now Ireland, I can, I'm speaking from an Irish perspective because that's what I saw the most, is we got a bit of a build up for a couple of weeks where they barely showed the jersey. And then surprise, surprise, it was green. Like, it, who is shocked at that? Why does that need a build up? Why is, why is that sort of thing? The way it's marketed and the way it's presented, yeah, it's kind of trying to build up hype to it as if it's like a tournament or something. But like these jerseys come out every year. We're expecting a new jersey to come out and that's grand. But there was nothing really special about this jersey. Now, unless there's something that I'm missing and that there is a special meaning to the jersey and why it looks like a paintbrush rag, uh, well, I didn't see it. So obviously it wasn't presented or marketed well enough for someone like me who is into this sort of stuff to actually notice it. Now, granted, the editors did a good job. Again, as I said, the jersey does look nicer than what the last one did, and but it just means nothing until the opportunity comes along that Ireland wins something in this kit. Let's say we wore this kit with the paintbrush design at the World Cup, and we won the World Cup. Amazing. Never gonna happen. Can't even get to a semi-final. But then that jersey would mean something. But at the moment, it means nothing. And I know you can't always hark back to past victories, but it would be nice to do something like that at some point. We never even did anything for celebrating the first time we ever wore the Grand Slam. God knows how long, it's like 70, 80 years ago now. We've never done anything for that yet. Are we gonna wait another 20 years for it to happen? I don't know. And the same thing with Leinster, we're constantly, no, Leinster, to be fair, they have Adidas who seem to be doing a lot better job of making modernized jerseys and they look nice. And Munster are doing a really good job at it this year, I think. But again, I think that's just Adidas's team and they're doing a pretty good job and then they get certain things. Some of them look a little similar to like the Man United jersey and stuff like that. I think, you know, just opposite colors. They seem to be doing a better job at making nicer looking modern jerseys. I would like again to see the clubs hark back to a bit more of the classics, the retro styles. Maybe bring the odd collar jersey in again. But that's just something I think they could do. What was I talking about? 
Oh, the presentation. Ah, the marketing of it. It needs to be more important. Canterbury made that mistake of putting models in it rather than using actual Irish women rugby players. I have no understanding of what the marketing idea behind that was. I don't know if they just cheaped out, which I don't understand because through no fault of their own, the booking the Irish rugby woman would be less than trying to book Bundyaki for a photo shoot. I don't know exactly how they work, but I imagine you have to get paid for your time. Nothing is free in this world. So if you had to pay this person to be your face of the ladies rugby in Ireland. I don't understand why you wouldn't choose an actual ladies rugby player. I, I don't get it myself. Like, I don't care what you think of it's trying to appeal to the average person and these athletes are not the average people. But then why was Bundy Aki, a New Zealander who I am so happy plays for Ireland? Why is he one of the faces of Irish rugby, whereas the face of Irish rugby for women is some stock photo from God knows where makes no sense so the presentation of these things are so important and football does it so much better than what rugby does you can build so much more hype around rugby in this country in Ireland and I'm sure in other countries as well if you marketed these things better and tried to be more inclusive instead of keeping it to these like instead of trying to gatekeep to women's rugby what it looked like in this case I know that's being a bit exaggeratory because women can play it anyway it's not like this one marketing thing is going to be an issue but you just kind of feel for the people who actually play the sport but they don't get the opportunity to market for the team that they give up so much time for insane and it kind of lacks inclusion again you're losing touch with the fan base basically presentation is important and marketing is important for your jersey the way it looks is important and adding history to the jersey whether it be past successes or history of the country just like as I said, Japan and done. Uh, Scotland always put the tartan pattern that they officially got from Scotland Tartan Company put into their jersey, so they have a bit of that. What and as I've complained about there, Ireland just has green. Leinster is just a cool blue jersey, and Munster. To be fair to Munster, I think they get like the counties put in quite a lot. Now I don't know how much say the marketing teams from the clubs get to put in this, but people really need to start thinking about this sort of stuff. If you enjoyed this kind of rant video let me know down below let me know what more tutorials that you want me to see uh, recently I did the shadows tutorial and in the future I'm going to be doing a jersey tutorial on how I make jerseys because I've just complained so much about how other people do it that Jesus Christ I may do it myself I didn't even get on to the cuts of the jerseys because every cut is going to be different and some of them are going to be winners some of them are going to be losers Puma has an awful awful history of doing bad cuts on jerseys for Ireland god almighty some of their collars are crap the Canterbury are not much better but that's kind of what we're stuck with but anyway if you'd like to see more of this stuff of course subscribe like the video comment down below what you'd like to see next and as always have a good one good luck